This is Inspiring Minds, a podcast focused on thought-provoking conversations between BSB students and our world-class faculty. Hello, welcome to another episode of Inspiring Minds. My name is Angela Chen, a senior majoring in accounting and MIS, and I'm here with Dr. Chen, an associate professor of accountancy and information systems here in the business school. Thank you so much, Dr. Chen, for joining me today to speak about IFRS and U.S. GAAP. Thank you for having me today. What first inspired you to research and write about this topic? That's a great question. I have a broader interest in international accounting standards and U.S. listed foreign firms when I was a doctor student at Temple. And for foreign firms listed in the United States, at that time, if your primary accounting standards are not U.S. GAAP, you need to re-report your financial statement using U.S. GAAP. So what happened at that time along 2002-ish is that there is big talk about convergence between international accounting standards and U.S. accounting standards, which is U.S. GAAP. So a valid research question that at that time will be, what's the effects of reconciliation. In our words, how investors view the reconciliation information as value relevant or not. Now, that brought me to kind of two of my research project. Now, SEC removed the reconciliation requirement in 2007 if you are a U.S. listed foreign firms and report your financial statement under IFRS. And SEC also have the talk of moving itself into IFRS for domestic firm. That's kind of inspired me to look at the impacts of IFRS versus U.S. gaps on the U.S. market. And now can you summarize the main findings of your research? We find that on average, U.S. listed foreign firms pay more audit fee than foreign U.S. gap firms. And also, U.S. listed foreign IFRS firms are more likely to receive going concern opinions than foreign U.S. GAAP firms. We also find that cross-sectionally, audit fee and the likelihood of receiving a going concern opinions are higher for IFRS firms with more complex transaction and higher misstatement risk. And also for firms from the developed country compared with the emerging country. Why do you expect that auditors charge higher audit fees and issue more going concern opinions for IFRS clients than for U.S. GAAP clients? So that has to go back to the auditing literature. Like in your audit class, you learn about engagement risk. Engagement risk has three components, client business risk, audit risk, and audit business risk. Now, audit risk itself can be decomposed into three parts. Uh, the inherent risk, which is the risk of financial misstatement, and control risk, the risk that uh, financial misstatement will be detected by valid internal control, and detection risk, the risk that the financial misstatement uh, will be detected by the audit procedure. So we argue that the IFRS versus U.S. gap can affect their inherent risk and detection risk differently. Why is that? The IFRS is perceived to be more principle-based. U.S. gap is perceived to be more rule-based. So under a principle-based standards, four things will happen. First, it does not have bright line threshold. Number two, it has very few exemption, like industry or scope exemption. Number three, it has very few interpretation guidelines. Number four, it's offer much less details than U.S. GAAP. So in our words, it's actually required managers to exercise more judgment under a principle-based standards than under a rule-based standard. For that reason, and we would expect that managers might be able to uh, manipulate their earnings more. And from the auditor's side, because the principal does not provide much details for auditors to make sure that the financial statement has been 
presented carefully in according to the accounting standard. So the auditors has to put more efforts to audit the financial statement of the IFRS clients. As a result of that, we will expect that auditors will charge higher fees to compensate their audit efforts or to compensate the higher risk associated with the principle-based standards. And the other ways that auditor can respond to that is to audit more conservatively, which means auditors can issue more going concern opinions. I also noticed that in the sample of data you collected, um, it was taken from November 2007 uh, to December 2014, which included the global financial crisis of 2008. Did this have any effect on your data or results? That's a very valid question. During the financial crisis, the accounting people are going to downsize their business, so uh, they are very cautious about their costs, so they may want to cut their audit fee. So it might have an impact on result. But think about our research setting. We have foreign IFRS firms, and we have U.S.-listed foreign U.S. GAAP firms. To that financial crisis to affect our result, it should just affect foreign IFRS firms without affecting foreign U.S. GAAP firms, or vice versa. If it affects both type of firms at the same time, it shouldn't affect our result. Nevertheless, we do remove our sample from the financial crisis period, and we still get the same result. And so in the end, what was the biggest takeaway you would like the SEC to take from your research and your data? I think the biggest takeaway for the SEC is that we find that auditors charge higher audit fee and issue more going concern opinions for U.S. listed foreign IFRS firms compared with the U.S. listed foreign U.S. GAAP firm. And we also find that the effects of IFRS on the audit outcomes can be mitigated by some factors like misstatement risk and uh, transaction complexity and also from whatever country that you are coming from. Based on your research, what recommendations would you make to the SEC on whether, when, or how to incorporate IFRS into U.S. domestic firms? That's always a hard question to answer. From our research, we identified a cost associated with the IFRS clients. And as SECs think about moving towards IFRS in the future, they might want to keep in mind that moving from a rule-based standards to a principle-based standards, it might create additional costs to auditors. At the same time, we acknowledge that SEC's decisions should base on both the cost and benefit analysis. We identify a cost associated with it, but there can be other benefits that associated with the adoption of IFRS, such as you get more harmonized accounting standards with your industry peers from the Europe, from the Canadas, as more uh, firms around the world adopt IFRS, we're losing some advantage of not being able to speak in the same accounting language. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Chen, uh, for taking the time to spend with us today for the Inspiring Minds podcast. Um, it was great speaking with you. Thank you for allowing me to talk about my research. Thank you for listening to Inspiring Minds. Stay tuned for our next installment featuring more VSB students discussing research topics with our world-class faculty.